Hi, David Hart here from G4 Guitar Teacher Network. I've got Donnie here from uh, Start Teaching Guitar and DonnieStartTeachingGuitar.com. Um, and the reason I've got Donnie here is because he's he's had a lot of experience working with uh, guitar teachers, and uh, we've been friends and acquaintances for for a little while now. And uh, we you know we share ideas and talk about the different things that we, we're doing and achieving, and and the kind of challenges that teachers face because we're both very similar in the in the sense that we're trying to uh, do as much as we can for our our clients, the teachers that we work with, and we know that each of us has our own strengths, and we can share those ideas um, to each other. So I thought I'd ask Donnie, and he was very keen to do this, is to to bring him in for an interview and ask him some questions and and share with you guys out there. So thanks, Donnie, for dropping by. I know you're very busy. Yeah, thank you, David. It's my pleasure having me on. So, so let, let's. Why don't we just start with a? If you just give us a bit of background on yourself, um, you know, your history or whatever you like, you, you just tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, my name is Donnie Schecksnyder. I I'm uh, from Colorado Springs, over in the United States, and I started playing guitar at around age eight, I guess. Um, and I started guitar and like sure. After because uh, the only guitar teacher that they had available in our town was uh, a guy that he kind of reminded me of, like of a traveling snake oil salesman or something, and oh, yeah. uh, he 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 was running a guitar class, a group guitar class uh, over in a neighboring town, and he had probably I want to say about 20 students in there, all various ages, and uh, he was really a really bad music teacher. Um, he, he was basically just teaching everyone um, straight out of the same book. It, you know, they had beginners, they had people that were a little further along, and as an eight-year-old, I had it in my mind that I wanted to play um, songs by bands like Kiss and ACDC, and you know, those were the things I was listening to surprisingly at eight years old, and um, you know, he was teaching things like my body, you know, eyes or whatever, and um, just uh, really the experience was terrible. I, I think I lasted two or three lessons. Uh, I, my dad kept taking me back. It was the only thing that he could find uh, for me to learn guitar. We didn't know anyone that could teach me. Um, but because of that bad experience, I, I just got completely overwhelmed and I didn't, I quit and I didn't play guitar again until 10 years, 18 yep. years old. Um, and I, I think that's a pretty common tale. Um, a lot of a lot of kids go and, and try to find uh, guitar teachers, and they're all excited, and you know their hopes are really high, and then they end up with a teacher that really can't help them. And I think a lot of them probably quit playing altogether, maybe never even pick the guitar up again. I know that would have been the case for me, but when I was 18, um, I had a, a friend who was a guitarist that was interested in me and and taught me a lot of things um, to kind of get me over that beginner's hump. And, until I could kind of self-identify as a guitar player, and yeah. then once once that was the case, once I was hooked on the guitar and I was actually, you know, actually believed that I could play, then I was off to the races. You know, I started taking lessons from different teachers, and then I found the best teachers around that I could actually learn from. You know, I, I also uh, signed up with some duds <laughs> whenever I was in age. Yeah. But I was basically hooked at that point, and uh, and then just played guitar all the time. I didn't I didn't go out on dates. I didn't go out partying. I just played guitar <laughs> all the time, um, you know. And then kind of career wise, I, I I hadn't started teaching yet, uh, but I was involved uh, pretty heavily in in our local church, and I ended up taking over the youth group there. And uh, there was a um, this was back in the early 1990s, and you know, a lot of churches were still doing really old-fashioned music, and I, I, I decided to start doing kind of rock music uh, in the youth group meetings. So I, I actually, I have the guitar that I've played for probably the last 20 years, this, this green uh, Strat Plus here. So I, this is what I actually used back then, and I would, uh, I would lead worship with that guitar, lead the music, and all of a sudden... So you've had that guitar for how long? How, how long have you had that guitar? Uh, I've had that guitar for uh, gosh about 22 years, something like that. It, it was uh, it, it belonged to my father-in-law, and he let me have it uh, when I first started to play. So when I was 18. But um, 
Yeah, so, you know, all of a sudden there's the, this this crazy guitar music, you know, blues licks and all of this stuff going on, and kids started to come out of the woodwork. Um, people were bringing their friends just just to hear me play, I think. Uh, a lot of them started asking me to teach them guitar because there were really no guitar teachers again in this the town that I grew up in in south Louisiana. So um, that was how I got my start teaching. Uh, they were just begging me, teach me guitar. And, and all of a sudden they had guitar players sprouting up everywhere like mushrooms. I mean, it was, it was really kind of a, a cool time. Yeah, um, yeah. but I, I was teaching so most of them. Started, sorry, Donnie, just to jump in. So you kind of started a bit of a trend? Would you say that because you were there that, that started? Or were these just hidden people who, who wanted to play guitar already? It was... I think it was more like the Pied Piper kind of situation. Um, there was yeah. there, there was no one that those kids had ever been around before that could play guitar, that that yeah. played electric guitar that way. So I think uh, they, I I was just fortunate enough to be able to inspire a lot of people. Um, and, it's, it's, uh, interesting that, it's interesting that and I just want to touch on that for a second because I think it's such a great topic, and and, and this is something that I that I talk about with teachers as well. And my teacher, who I went to in Sydney, uh, you know, when I went to him, I sort of I got referred to him. I think somehow I can't even remember. But he was the same. He was booked literally every day from you know early afternoon through till 10 p.m. He was some nights he was there till like 10:30 at night time, um, you know, working these long hours trying. To, but he loved what he was doing, and he was like you say the Pied Piper effect. And we all talked about him. Uh, everyone thought he was just the ants' pants. Um, yeah. And this is the effect that a teacher can have. And this is obviously, you know, it happened for me as well because I just copied him, really. Um, but, yeah, that that I think that's what a lot of teachers are missing is that kind of Pied Piper effect about how you can really influence um, your community to people who probably wouldn't normally play guitar, take it up just to be part of that whole community. Yeah. Sorry, go on. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, that's That's exactly what happened. And one of the lessons I learned kind of through that experience was that is business like this uh, as a teacher is to kind of go into an area and then just make a splash um, you know because once you you get a little bit of notoriety as a player then there's gonna there's usually naturally kind of a flow of people that'll start asking you about lessons and wanting to get to know you and things like that so it really helps kind of speed things up as opposed to just hanging a shingle outside of your house and saying guitar lessons available you know but the people don't know who you are they don't know what you can do there's kind of no emotional connection to you as a, a player or a musician or anything like that so yeah. yeah so that's that's kind of how I got started with teaching um, like I mentioned I didn't really make any money <laughs> I just did it for free um, because I wanted to help people and I just love the guitar and I loved interacting with all the young people and stuff so I mean that's I did that for a while but then I eventually, you know, when I, I was married and started having kids, I realized I had to do something to make a little bit more money. So I started branching out into different kinds of businesses. Uh, I did IT consulting. I did real estate investing, uh, um, DIY, indie musician thing for a while. And then I also decided, well, I'm going to start teaching guitar lessons for money. Um, and uh, out of all of those things, I actually I loved uh, – the guitar teaching probably the most and, and I, I learned as much as I could I just absorbed everything I could find out about the subject to, to be the best that I could be and I ended up uh, adapting a lot of the stuff I learned from the IT consulting the computer repair you know networking stuff I was doing and the marketing that I did for the real estate investing and I kind of put it all together and took a full apply the guitar and a lot of it worked you know, I was I was really surprised that some of the same systems adapted, you know, and and kind of customized for the teaching market worked really really well. So I was able to bring in a lot of students and and be really successful as a solo guitar teacher. So, I, 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 sorry, I was just going to say I, I love it when I speak to guitar teachers and they say, "Hey, I I don't want to be a business person or I don't want to be a sales person or you know I I, I just want to teach guitar." Uh, well, unfortunately, you're in business, um, mm -hmm. and, and if you don't have the, the necessary business skills, such as selling, uh, such as marketing, uh, you know, general business uh, practices, yeah, it's going to be very difficult. And that's what you know, the great example you've, take, you've taken, th and that's what I find a lot of the most successful teachers are uh, have come from other industries where they've learned 
these skills and then they apply it to their guitar teaching. It's the guys who are kind of pure guitar players have no business experience and want nothing to do with it, um, who struggle because they don't have those skills. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I totally agree. I mean, you could be a great guitar player and a, a really good guitar teacher, but unless you understand at least the basics of how to run a business and how to attract customers and how to keep your customers happy and how to keep that, you're be able to, uh, to eat. You're not going to make a good living as a guitar teacher. It's going to constantly be a struggle. Yeah, yeah. Because there really is business and, and you know, I, I call it the kind of, uh, you know, the triad, if you like, um, where you've got the, the business elements that you need, obviously, uh, the, um, the teaching and then the guitar. And, you know, you can't have one or, or even two out of three. You've got to have three out of three. And, you know, the guitar is, is, you know, I hate to say it, it's probably the least important um, because <laughs> you don't actually have to have a lot of guitar skills. Um, you know, you don't have to look on, on YouTube and some of the most successful guys teaching on YouTube are not the world's greatest guitar players. Um, you know, they're... they're and it's, I'm not criticizing them in any way. Um, it's just it's it's just one of those things. Can you hang on one second? Sorry. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things where you have uh, if you don't have the the necessary business skills and you don't have the necessary teaching skills, then it doesn't matter how good your guitar playing is. Um, you're not going to make any money, and you're not going to retain students. Uh, yeah, so you're out of the game from the word go. You can have basic guitar skills and still still teach it because because I I did. You know, I started teaching before I should have really began teaching um, as a teenager. Sorry, Donny, go on. Yeah, no, that and it's it's cool that you mentioned the the triad. You know, the the three different kind of cornerstones of of teaching guitar. I. I I kind of teach the same things. Uh, I call it the three-legged stool of teaching guitar. Right? You have the guitar playing leg, you have the guitar teach leg, and then you have the business. And if those legs is missing, then you're really doing a balancing act, you know, trying to stay on top of that stool. And if all you have is one leg, just the playing leg, then it's it's almost impossible to uh, to have you know stability in your business. So it's it's interesting that. We've uh, we've kind of adapted the same principles in, in two similar ways. It, it, I, I guess you kind of arrive at the same conclusions. You know, it becomes sort of obvious. It's the same in the music business. You know, uh, and that's why they call it a music business. There are lots of musicians out there who are writing songs and doing kind of you know good things musically, uh, and they can't understand why they can't get a break. Um, and it's just because they they're not approaching it from a business point of view. They're an artist. They're a musician. They do great work. Um, but without the business elements to it, and that's why you know the, the kind of the standard uh, you know struggling jazz musician, which you know we see all the time, these amazing musicians. They just um, you know we should be down on our hands and knees praying to these guys because they're such so amazing players, but they don't have the business skills to, uh, to get get their kind of their ideas and products out there and make their music popular. Because there's no reason why any great musician can't be have a great following and make a good income, even if they are playing some abstract, you know, freestyle jazz, um, there's still an audience for, for them, uh, you know, in, in any area, so. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and that's, that, that lack of, of business uh, skill and even interest in, in business and marketing and things like that, that was one of the reasons that I decided to start uh, coaching guitar teachers or trying to, to be a resource to help people that recognize that um, they needed that to improve, yeah, um, if successful. So that's that's that kind of brings me full circle back to startteachingguitar.com, which I started in uh, May of 2011. It started out as a blog and a podcast, which the podcast is uh, is still going on today. I think I'm at episode 136 or something, as as we're talking right now, but. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so that's that's kind of how uh, I got into actually trying to be a coach and a resource for teachers. Okay, so just just on your website quickly, people can go there and they can listen to these podcasts. Some of them are free. Some of them do you have to join. How does it work? Yeah, so I do I do a free episode every four weeks. Um, every fourth episode, I'm able to for my iTunes or to listen to right on my website, and then I have a monthly membership. Um, 
where I do uh, a paid episode, um, three of those every month, along with a bunch of other resources. I call that STG All Access. Um, so, yeah, so I, I do give a lot of free information away, though, because I realize that a lot of people that are trying to make a go of teaching guitar, that they're really struggling financially, and a lot of people really need encouragement more than anything else. They just need to know that there's someone out there that's, that's rooting for them and that believes in them and is willing to support them um, because a lot of times it feels like you're just all alone, you know. Yeah. So that's why yeah. I try to keep a, a lot of free information um, flowing out there on a regular basis, just to kind of reach out to people. Which, which is great because it all lines up. Because the, the the title of your your kind of business is what really got my attention initially, and and why I, I sort of you know wanted to talk to you because start teaching guitar really is you know, guys who are starting out uh, from the very beginning. So, um, and if you're giving away free stuff, it's it's great because it's like you say, it's giving them that sort of chance to uh, maybe get a couple of students, get some money coming through the door, and then they can go, okay, well now I'm I'm in more financial. So yeah, I can go to the next step. And it's important, I think, that you know, part of what you're sort of saying here, and and the information is showing them how to set up their own teaching. Um, you know, how to get started in business by you know, putting a website together, you know, getting a domain, uh, maybe giving a free free ebook or doing some videos or podcasts or something just to get their name out there uh, mm-hmm. and get moving. These are just some, yeah, just looking at your business model and saying, okay, well, they can not only just learn learn from your podcast, but can also learn from your business model as well, which is great. Yeah. Um, so. I've just uh, got a couple of questions. So, what do you what do you feel is the, kind of the main challenge for guitar teachers, or some of the main challenges? What would you put up there that you hear from teachers? Yeah, well, we've already talked about some of them, um, but uh, there there are three that I think are kind of really big. Chat. First one, uh, I, honestly, I think is mindset. Um, I think a lot of a lot of guitar teachers. Um, a lot of well, there are, I kind of you could divide them into two camps. There are people that are actually trying to to teach guitar, and then there are people that are thinking about it, that um, don't know if they have what it takes, don't know if they could be successful. So they they really want to teach. They have an interest in it. They have a passion for it. They want to help other people excel on the guitar, but they just don't they don't take action because they're to because they they don't think that they're qualified for one reason or another. Um, so I think there's a lot of potential guitar teachers out there, people that would that are great players, that would be great teachers, that they have a lot of knowledge and wisdom to impart, that never take the step um, because they don't have enough confidence in their abilities as a teacher or maybe as a business owner. And that, that kind of all falls under the mindset category for me. So one of the things I try to focus on a lot is, um, is, in, is dealing with lead. You know, I talk about that in the podcast a lot about um, negative um, thoughts and, and de- you know, trying to, to focus on having a mindset for success instead of always focusing on the bad side of things. Yeah. So, yeah, because if you don't believe... Lost a student. Why did I lose that student? What did I do wrong? Why am I such a yeah. bad teacher? Yeah, exactly. If you believe that you can do something, if you don't believe that you're going to be successful, then most people aren't even going to attempt it. So yeah. what I try to do is break a lot of those barriers down, those mental and emotional barriers, and just say, look, I, there's nothing special about me. If, if I could teach guitar, then you can do it too, you know. And, you know, everyone's going to have a, a different level of success. Everyone's going to be teaching in a different market. They're going to have different circumstances, areas that they focus on and things like that. But, you know, I, I found that if you just believe in yourself and you, you come up with a good plan and – Learn everything that you can. You know, most of it you can learn as you go, and you just get started with where you are, and good things usually follow. You know, as long as you stay on that path. So, yeah, yeah mindset is 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 huge uh, for success in any kind of business, I believe. So, so it's got kind of you know the the, the one of the things that I really liked was that you know a lot of people are afraid of success. Um, it's not not the, so much the fear of failure. It's the fear of success um, because you know we, we sort of have this thing about that if I succeed, then I'm expected to stay at a certain standard. I'm expected mm-hmm. to be this person. Um, it's easy to be down here, not even try. That way, I, I don't have to live up to those expectations. 
Yeah. Um, kind of a deep thought, but um, it is one of the things that affected me early on was was that um, you know I, f I found myself actually sabotaging my success a lot of the time, um, mm -hmm. and and not not in the sense that I was going out of my way to you know destroy what I was doing, but I was just holding back. I was just giving myself reasons not to to try. Um, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I remember. I remember dealing with those kinds of things too. I remember putting my phone number and email address out there uh, to try to get potential students, and then like I would like leave my phone turned off, and that nobody, <laughs> you know, things like that. Just because it was like, well, what if they call? Oh wow, then I have to really deliver, you know, on what I want to do, and what if I can't? And yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally related. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I remember with with young kids. I, at first, I wouldn't teach young kids because I had. I took on one, I think they were about six years old, and uh, you know, th three weeks later the mother said, look, he doesn't like coming to the lessons. Um, you know, what are, Did I do something wrong? Did I scare him? Or, and I just thought, I'm no good with kids. So when anyone rang up who was a young kid, I would just say, no, I don't teach young kids. Yeah. Um, and then it you know, dawned upon me, it's just because I don't have the experience. Um, you know, I don't know how to teach young kids, so what's the solution? Go out and learn. Um, and I think it was uh, Tony Robbins who sort of uh, taught me this lesson, and he said that you go and read, uh, you know, I think it was something like uh, ten or twenty books on any subject, and you'll be a world expert. Go, go, go and get twenty good books, tw the twenty best books on any subject, and you'll be an expert um, of world class standard in that that topic. And it's so true. Um, you know, I've now probably read several hundred business books, um, mm -hmm. and I when I began. I knew, I knew very little about business. Um, I had my family were in business, but they also made a lot of mistakes. And as I read the books, I was looking, that's my family. They're making those mistakes. Um, but it was through reading those books I was able to actually, and that's one of the strengths of us as humans, is we're able to live vicariously through other people and learn vicariously through other people. So. Yeah, absolutely. It's so important to, to be a lifelong learner. Um, you know, like I mentioned before, there are some things you need to know to get started, but the rest of it, I really believe you can learn as you go along and, and just kind of grow into having a successful business as a teacher once you finally take action and get started. And But reading great books on business and marketing and student retention and those kinds of things uh, are, are a critical part of the process. I really believe that. Okay, cool. So, so what did you do to change your mindset? How did you, was there a point or was something that kind of hit you? It's, uh, yeah, it was, a, I guess, about 10 or 15 years ago where I, I really, I don't remember exactly how it started. Uh, it might have been some of the people that I was associating with at the time, but I, I really start, started to have this hunger for personal growth. And I started reading books, like I read the uh, the Robert Kiyosaki series of books. Um, this was right about the time that that was one of the reasons I actually the real estate investing was because a lot of the business books that I read at the time really promoted that as a way to make yeah. a good living and stuff. And um, that didn't work out so well. He, he, he basically made his fortune through real estate renting. Buying and renting, didn't he? I think. Yeah, yeah, property investing, and you know that didn't really work out so well for me. But the lessons I learned uh, through that process, like I mentioned before, applied to other things that I was doing. But like I would read, I would go from one book, kind of like you were saying, one book would inspire me, and then I would, you know, find other books that were similar. And and before I started, it's like Think and Grow Rich and um, by Napoleon Hill and um, other books that really focus on um, the fact that you, just by the way that you think and the way that you approach your life and the thoughts you think, how they become the actions that you take and your actions become your habits and then your habits become your destiny and those type of things. I started seeking out as many resources as I could find to help uh, kind of get rid of a lot of the head trash and self and insecurity and things like that that I was... Uh, struggling with a lot at that time. So okay. yeah, it's, it's just been a journey ever since. I'm, I'm, I'm constantly looking for um, you know, more and more resources I can consume to improve my own mindset and I think that's naturally just kind of flowed out in all the other things that I do too. Yeah, yeah. Because if you, if you don't keep doing it and you don't keep reading, uh, you know, even with kind of, you know, here's me, you know, really I got on this this path over 20 years ago. Um, and, and 
if I stop, it, it doesn't, it's like fitness. You start to, you know, the muscles start to soften and, um, you know, everything starts to sort of, you've got to keep at it, you've got to keep, and I, I think this is the, probably the, the daunting thing for a lot of people, but it's like guitar, once you start, you can't stop. Um, you know, there's no there's no stopping with guitar. It's not like oh, I've learnt guitar now. I'll give it up and I'll go and do something else. Um, <laughs> you know, there are probably some people who do that, but um, certainly not people I know. Um, so yeah, I, I totally get it. And it's that lifelong learning and that attitude to lifelong learning that really counts. So, so is there um, as far as working with someone? Can you give any examples of someone you've worked with and how you've helped them? Sure. Yeah, I mean. Um what what I really try to do is um, is put together some structure that is easy for guitar teachers to understand um, that they could work within that gives them a system to uh, attract new students because that's always one of every everyone's biggest struggles is like how do I get more more students coming in the front door you know if you picture your your teaching studio as a building right there's a front door and there's a back door and there's a big room inside where all of your students are congregating. Mark bringing people into the front door and student retention is about keeping them from going out the back door. You know, a lot of a lot of teachers they just have this cycle. People come in through the front door, they stay a little while and then they go out the back. So it, you know, it's all their marketing efforts get negated just because they're losing students just as fast as they come in. So, you know, what I try to do is is, uh, is is help put an end to that vicious cycle <laughs> and um, teach systems that you know, help people attract more students and, and keep their existing students with them longer. But having said that, I mean, I've, I've been fortunate to be able to work with people, you know, all over the English-speaking world. Obviously, I can't, I don't want to share their names, I want to protect their privacy, but um, I've worked with people here in the United States, in Canada, in the United Kingdom, Africa, Australia, where, where you're located, and even in um, some Eastern almost European nations like Slovenia. Um, I've had people that have heard the podcast and contacted me and I ended up in either coaching them in a small group or um, doing private coaching or providing training courses and resources for them to help them reach their goals for their teaching studio. So I mean uh, just a couple of examples. Um, there's a guy in Houston, Texas that started out uh, as just a solo teacher with a handful of Students. Um, he he now has a successful music school with other teachers working for him. Just o over the last two or three years, um, and I was able to to work a little bit with a guy in South Africa who went from being a solo guitar teacher, is kind of where you know a lot of people that I I work with start out, and then he ended up totally dominating his local market, and he's built this school with hundreds and hundreds of students now. And I, I can't take credit for all that. I'm not, I'm not going to pretend that all of that happened just because of me, because these guys worked really hard and they created their own success. But I was able to be an influence and help. And yeah. that's what it's all about. It's not about taking credit, you know, for other people's successes. It's about just just helping people find what they need so that they can get to the next level. Yeah, and it's the same. It's the same as guitar students. You know, you, you any of the students that I've taught over the years. I don't take credit for their success. Um, you know, what I do is is facilitate, and 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 because they can they have to play a part. They have to be willing. They have to come looking. Um, they have to invest. Um, they have to do a lot. And then I, I see it more as a privilege. And I think yep. you know we talked about this before. Um, it's an absolute privilege when someone comes to you and says, "Okay, I'm willing to pay you to get some advice and some coaching and direction." Um, and that's something that you know. I think you know we, we both share in the sense that you know with students this is what teachers really should look at is that see every student that you teach as an absolute privilege and and that they're sponsoring you in your career and your your ability to keep playing guitar um, and you know paying your rent and all those things so you don't have to go out and get a nine to five job um, yeah. so yeah absolutely deliver to them as much as you can um, rather than an expectation of you know you owe me because I just gave up half an hour of my time. Um, it's like, well, thank you, um, you know, for being here. <laughs> you, you know. And that's really how I, I think when you have that attitude, I, I think that's what projects out. And, and really what I want to touch on before we finish, because we're going to wrap up soon, but it is what you said earlier, which I think is absolute gold, 
uh, from the introduction about how you built a community um, and you almost created a viral effect, and this is something that I talk about a lot as well. Um, can you give us a little bit more on that? Like, how, how, what would you say going back? You probably did it unconsciously back in those days, but looking, uh, you know, back now in hindsight, what was it that created that kind of community viral? Uh, situation in your area where everybody was picking up guitar because this, this is not just happens with the guitar it happens in lots of things mm -hmm. uh, so yeah any, any advice there yeah honestly I think I was just at the right place at the right time David mm -hmm. because uh, I, I don't think I could have engineered that if I would have tried to um, I, I was at the right place I had the the level of skills that I had at the time and there I was in a situation where it was exactly what a lot of people were looking for and there was no one else that could deliver it <laughs> yeah yeah so would you what would you and I, I totally understand that it, timing and luck definitely has a lot to do with it um, I, you know when I was teaching uh, you know when I started G4 guitar I, I had ran music school you know for years before that with you know with with success but not the level of success that I had with G4 um, and G4 was sort of originally went from zero to you know enrolling over 3,000 students in two years um, and yes some of it was luck but what was kind of looking back on it it was more what I kind of missed and that was the group effect you know I was I, I began teaching in groups and it was that kind of connection of students through groups that created the viral effect I could see that it wasn't me um, you know, I, I actually, you know, I played a part, but it wasn't me being this amazing teacher that everyone was out there raving about. What they were raving about was just learning guitar. It was about they were into the guitar, and because they're in groups, that, that it created a viral effect. Where most teachers are operating privately, and they don't get that sort of uh, viral effect. Is there anything that you can think of that you know, if you were to take some advice, it doesn't have to be about you, but just from that situation? Oh, sure, absolutely, and yeah, when you put it that way. Um yeah, I mean, one of the reasons why I was so successful back in those early days is because um, it, w it was um, there was so much positive peer pressure um, in that situation too. I mean, once wow, someone was calling you too. I apologize. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, um, once uh, once a few people started learning how to play guitar, you know, then all of a sudden um, it was you know there, this whole peer group. Because there was a um, a high school attached to this church as well, and that's that was where a lot of these uh, students were coming from. And once they saw that their peers could actually learn how to play guitar, and they were buying guitars and they were bringing their guitars to school and taking them with them everywhere and learning, actually learning how to play. I mean, everybody wanted to be able to do that, you know. So that's ex this whole just grew and um, it, it did spread a lot like a virus looking back at it. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean once once they saw that someone their age could do this then it was like oh wow then I want to do it too and the most unlikely of people started sprouting up. I mean young girls that were 13 years old started getting guitars and bringing them to school and I mean all these different people um, Very, they didn't really have anything, you know, there was, there was really nothing they could really hang their you know, all of a yeah. sudden, music became one of their passions and a part of their identity, and it was it was really and, cool. Yeah, it happened as a community. Yeah, and that's it. And and I think it's it's underestimated by many many guitar teachers. Uh, you know, in every area, because you know, when I was at school, uh, we had Rubik's cubes. I don't know if you remember those things, but you know, oh, yeah. you sort of work them out. And suddenly, you know, I think one kid or two kids brought them to school, and then suddenly every kid had one. You know. <laughs> Um, and some of them had two or three, you know. Um, it just was insane, um, this Rubik's Cube craze. And then there was, I remember several times there were like yo-yos, you know, yo-yos would become a craze. Suddenly they'd come in and everyone had yo-yos and doing the yo-yo tricks and then they'd sort of go. Um, and then, there were, you know, we had like footy cards. and So crazes come and if you can see them and you can try and facilitate them, they're not always easy to create. If You know, if you could create them, then everyone would just be doing it. Um, but it's something that to, to be aware of um, with learning guitar and that's what happened for me is that there was this real craze. I was literally getting 10 inquiries a day, people trying to book in to learn guitar um, and there was just this whole 
thing about and, and it, like I said it wasn't about me they weren't coming for me it's not like I was some you know rock star that they were all turning up for it was about learning guitar um, and that interaction so um, it's something to be aware of and, and just to keep looking for it and uh, you know yeah it's and it was just great hearing your story because I think that that sort of for me it's you know hearing someone else who's had that experience was yeah good to hear because I know it's not you know it's not an ego thing it's just something that happens where you were and yes a bit of luck a bit of timing um, as it did for me as well so. yeah I mean it's it's I heard someone say one time that success is the intersection where preparation and opportunity meet so I mean it's a lot of times what we consider luck it's it's just an opportunity that opened up after we put in the hard work to actually prepare ourselves and once you're ready for a situation like that a lot of times the the doors will open and I, I honestly think that's what happened to me and um, I see that happening with a lot of people at different points in their lives and their careers yeah 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 exactly it's it's it, uh, the kind of the last thing I would say on that topic is you know it, it's like when teachers say to me I tried you know, maybe they tried teaching guitar for a, for a month or two months or tried business or whatever, and they said, but it didn't really work. Um, and, and my advice is that what would you say to a guitar student who picked up the guitar three times and, would, and they said to you, it didn't work? I tried guitar a couple of times, but it didn't work. <laughs> it's yeah. like, well, it, it, it's not going to work. <laughs> You've got to practice um, for years, uh, and then it'll really work for you. But yeah, don't pick it up three times. It doesn't work. It's not working. This guitar's not working. Your guitar works, but mine doesn't. So. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's yeah. so true. Thanks, Donnie. This has uh, been fantastic. Uh, um, it's been great catching up with you, and um, I really appreciate you sharing um, your story and some of your insights. Uh, and just to finish off. It's your website again is startteachingguitar.com. Is that That's correct? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, All right. excellent. And I'll put a link at the bottom of this video as well. Um, and yeah, any last words? Anything you want to throw on the end? No, I just want to encourage everyone who's uh, who watches this interview to just uh, just go for it. You know, don't hold anything back. Don't let fear keep you from reaching out for your dreams and and becoming the kind of teacher and successful business. That you see that you have the potential to be, you know. A lot of times, people they feel fear and then they just freeze in their tracks, you know. But what what I've learned along the way is that fear is just a, a chemical in your brain, <laughs> you know. It's just an emotion, and uh, you know you can you can you can push past that. You can acknowledge it. It's like yeah, I feel afraid, but I don't have to stop doing the things I know that I want to do just because I feel afraid. You know, you can it. You can things of fear and and you can be successful as a guitar teacher you could be successful in, in anything that you want to pursue and I've learned that that's that's the difference between successful and unsuccessful people unsuccessful people they get afraid and they quit but successful people they feel the same fear but they push through it and they continue on until they reach success so I just want to encourage everyone to just go for it absolutely that's fantastic Thanks, Donny. I know you're busy, so I'm going to sign off here now. Um, and again, thank you so much for your time. It's my pleasure, David. Thank you.